On my next to last day in North Korea, December 19th, 2011, I was packing my suitcase for my flight when I heard a knock on the door. One of my colleagues, a Christian missionary, pointed at the ceiling and told me that he was dead and that we both had to go to a teacher's meeting immediately. It took me a few seconds to realize that she meant the closest thing to God in North Korea, Kim Jong-il. At the same time, the students had been called into a special meeting where they were told about Kim Jong-il's death, which had actually taken place two days earlier. I ran to the meeting and found out that the students were heading over to Kim Il-sung Research Hall building. We, the teachers, were never allowed inside. It was their holy building honoring the spirit of Kim Il-sung, and they literally guarded it day and night. But that afternoon, the teachers were encouraged to visit it and pay their respects to Kim Jong-il. Inside, I found a wake of sorts with a few students greeting mourners in front of a large portrait of Kim Jong-il in the center of the lobby. I didn't see any of them crying, but their faces were ghostly as though the sky had fallen. For the rest of the day, the campus remained eerily empty. Dinner was canceled and the few students I passed did not meet my eyes. I saw my students for the last time at breakfast the next morning. They looked as though they'd been crying all night. Even though we'd grown close over the months, they were so immersed in their grief that they looked right through me. People ask me what it was like when Kim Jong-il died, whether North Koreans were really wailing with grief, like the ones they saw on TV. What I saw was even more disturbing. My students' sorrow seemed so absolute and irrevocable that I thought about the song lyric that ended up being the title of my book. Without you, there is no us.